Hodgkin lymphoma it really has been a very interesting disease over the last multiple decades as we've understood the biology that's allowed us to translate uh, the biology into therapy. So the focus of what uh, I've been talking about has been the focus of taking the biology and applying it to treatment. And I think the key ways to think about that is if one thinks of the microenvironment in lymphoma, as you think about specifically uh, which cells are present around the Reed-Sternberg cells. So we just need to remind ourselves that Reed-Sternberg cells are really a minority and a majority of cells in the microenvironment are other immune cells. So there are a number of strategies for treatment and the treatment is either to directly target the Reed-Sternberg cell and that's been done with chemotherapy in the past but more recently with antibody drug conjugates such as brentuximab vidotin. But more recently than that, we've understood that the microenvironment around the Reed-Sternberg cell, there are multiple cells present that we can utilize to target the tumor. One of those being effector T cells by using immune checkpoint blockade and additionally depleting our T reg cells and uh, agents such as CAMI T have been able to actually again an anti -drug, antibody drug uh, conjugate that would bind to a T reg cell and potentially deplete those. Macrophages are a further population of cells that are often quite prevalent in the microenvironment of Hodgkin lymphoma, often associated with a poor prognosis, but when agents such as AFM13 bind to both macrophages and to the um, Reed-Sternberg cell, that brings them into close proximity and allows for a kind of enhanced immune synapse and again an efficacy particularly when used in combination with PD-1 blockade. So all told, <clears throat> not only the tumor cell, but the microenvironment, you're providing a multiplicity of different immune and other targets for therapy, and this is translating into useful treatments for patients.